How often have you seen a Grandmaster losing in 15 moves? Well, probably not very often, but in the game we are going to take a look at, Sandro Mareco playing the white pieces is rated above 2600 and gave up after just 14 moves with the white pieces against Jeffrey Chong, a very strong and young Grandmaster rated almost 2700. So this being said, let's just jump straight into, into the heart of the action. Sandro Mareco playing the white pieces, plays d4, black plays d5, and c4 is played. And here Jeffrey Jung playing the black pieces decides to go into a queen's gambit accepted. So he takes the pawn on c4. White continues with knight to f3, and now a6 is played. Very often b5 might follow at some point, but not too early, and we will see why in a minute. e3, and if black now decides to go for b5, then there are moves like a4, bishop b7, and b3, and white is already doing very fine. c takes b3 is a mistake because of a takes b5, a takes b5, and after rook takes a8, bishop takes a8, this bishop takes b5 check, now the position of black is very bad. c6 and bishop to c4. White has a good advantage here. Instead, moves like e6 are a little bit better, but still not that great because after b takes c4, b takes c4, this bishop takes c4, and white is scoring very well, although this variation is played or was played by very strong players. So let's go back. Instead, Black plays knight to f6 and allows white to regain the pawn on c4. So bishop takes c4, e6, white castles, and now c5. And now a move like d takes c5 is very typical in these positions and this is equal. In the game, Mareko played b3 and this move is absolutely fine. It was played by Carlsen and Ding, so the top players play it, it should be fine. Knight b to d7, developing the knight, bishop b2, bishop to e7, and now Mareko plays an idea introduced by Sam Shankland in 2019, or introduced to a high level in 2019. Bishop to e2, the bishop drops back. And we will see the idea in one moment, it's pretty simple. The bishop wants to go to f3. Black castles, knight bd2, and black plays b6, knight e5. So now white finally got the f3 square for the bishop. Bishop to b7, bishop f3, queen to c7, and now white should play knight takes d7. After knight takes, d7, this, this rook c1 move. And this was played by Nikolaidis against Paunovic in the last century. But let's go back because this is a good variation which white did not play. Instead, white played rook c1 immediately without taking on d7. And now black took on e5 and Probably the best for white here is just to regain the knight on e5. However, white decided to take on b7, and now it's your turn. Try to figure out which move black had planned against bishop takes b7. I hope you found it. The move is knight e to g4. And after this move, white already resigned. But why? Well, black is threatening mate, and black is also threatening to capture the bishop on b7. After capturing on b7, black will have three minor pieces. One, two, three. Well, white will have only two left. So a very short game 
and a very fast win for Jeffrey Jong. Let me know your opinion. I was very fascinated that a strong grandmaster fell for this trap, but it might happen. And as mentioned, this rook c1 variation, playing rook c1 immediately isn't that good, so white might have felt already some pressure here. As always, I hope you liked the video and see you. Bye.